Hi, everybody. So hi, everybody on Facebook. I'm Molly with Hands-On Knitting Center. We've got Bridget here doing all of the actual work, and um, which I greatly appreciate. Uh, and so we are, I'm going to go ahead and just spotlight two things here. I'm going to spotlight that. I'm going to spotlight the yarn next to me. Um, so we're going to talk today about fashion trends um, and knitting fashion trends. Uh, for spring and then spring yarns. And so, and we, I'm gonna show you only a few of the new spring yarns because we are then saving some of our new spring yarns also for next month when we do a super fun um, uh, uh, in-store yarn crawl. Um, and we'll have more details on that soon. We're actually like seriously trying to figure out how to, um, uh, how to do it both in store and online, right? As we're opening up more and more. So it's, uh, you know, it's one thing to do all online. It's one thing to do, it's all in store. It's a whole other thing to do it this way. But anyway, so, so one of the most interesting things to me with fashion trends, um, and I'm just gonna share my screen and we're gonna go online and look at some stuff together. One of the interesting things about fashion trends is oftentimes knitwear, knitwear is a different fashion trend than hand knitting knitwear if that makes sense. Um, and so if you, that some of the things that are like super popular out there this year uh, in terms of knitted items are clingy, stretchy, sheer, right? Something that maybe is not, right? Exactly what, what the demographic of hand knitters is always into. Um, and so it's a very, uh, right, don't you love these like full body suits? This just kills me. Um, and maybe in, no, you know what, even in my 20s, I probably still wouldn't have worn it. Um, but it's, it's a huge trend, this like super stretchy, super fitted. And then if you look, really vibrant colors, oodles of patterns, right, going into really bright colors. Um, and then of course, uh, black, right? Cause we always have to have a little bit of that. But I mean, even these pants, like, you know, super stretchy, super sheer, and then crazy fun Versace like colors. Um, and so, and you can see them on the people. It's really fun. But it's one of those things that I think about most of us are unlikely to wander around wearing this. Well, part of it is of course, there is runway fashion and then there is what we are, what most people are willing to wear. I just thought I would do a little bit more and I always go to Vogue for fashion. I'm just gonna, don't, don't get sick. I'm going all the way up to the front top. So one of the things that I'm loving in the, the new fashion, obviously the micro mini skirt is gonna work for some of us, not all of us, um, but they're definitely saying show some leg this spring. We've all been cooped up. Um, they're not necessarily taking into consideration the COVID-19's double meaning <laughs> for many of us, um, but, uh, but maybe they're encouraging us to get out and do some more walking. So super cute, super vibrant, very, very short um, shorts and short skirts. But here's what most of us are going to love. I know for me, a full length, slightly higher waist. This is an ode to comfort and there we go. Almost all of us look really lovely in a nice flowy, easy wear trouser. And that's also, um, but super, super crazy fun pattern still. And this is also going to be one of those, um, one of those things that will work really, really nice with spring knitwear tops. Love, love, love the, the thought of doing a little bit of, of embroidery, having just an A section of something that has some pattern work on it. Um, and so this is sort of a really pretty sort of look at some of the things, lots and lots and lots of color and texture. So if you are not signed up for Amy's free form knitting class, um, it may be something that you want to do because I believe that that free form knitting um, is going to, going to sort of lend itself to this color palette that, uh, that people are doing this year. Um, and it should be really fun to even add a little bit of free form knitting onto a sweater, onto something that we're wearing. Okay, so moving away from the high fashion uh, and talking just knitted trends, some of the knitted trends that I'm seeing um, is uh, similar to last year where it is head to toe matchy matchy knitting. Um, and so if you've never tried a skirt, a knitted skirt, this may be the year that you go ahead and say, this is the year of the knitted skirt and let's go ahead and give this a shot. Um, and I'm loving the fact, and this is, of course, this is all machine knitting, the stuff that I'm showing you right now, but I'm loving the fact that it is, um, look at this 
fun detail of all of the buttons and a, a slit that comes up. And those buttons on this side are purely um, decorative. The top matches it. Again, those are quite form fitted. Just the little bit on your sleeve is matching the striping in the skirt. And so as we think about the things that we want to do in our knitting, we can take little bits from this. Look how fun that is to add that little bit of fringe right onto anything, just a little bit of texture at the bottom of the sweaters that we're making. Even following somebody else's patterns, these are some little bitty details that we could just add. Um, some making something that's an A-line, right? A-lining the sweater that you're making so it's nice and comfy. Those two are gonna be really, really handy for those of us like myself who did do the COVID-19 uh, weight gain as well. Um, again, you're going back to completely matching, 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 happy, happy colors, um, right? Love this, going back to your color blocking and having that simplicity between those two pieces. And really, really tailored top, totally asymmetrical and sort of crazy skirt. So I believe you could even take away from this. This is a year of anything goes. We have been cooped up for an entire year, most of us, and we're looking for fun, fun things. This is a really fun Pinterest board to follow called Ready to Wear 2021. Those of you who do Pinterest. Ready to wear is of course, um, this it will be the less expensive version of any um, haute couture uh, designer. Um, less expensive, not necessarily meaning that we're gonna buy it, right? It's still like a $1,600 dress, but it's not a $17,000 dress. Um, but so it is uh, often considered like your slightly more approachable designs, the designs that are not necessarily so out there, um, but some of them still being a bit, a bit much. For, for many of us, but I love the high-waisted trousers. Love the, that plaid and texture is still there. Puffed sleeves are still there. The neon colors are not as much. Super happy bright, but right, this yellow is your happy honey color, but not necessarily the neon. So the neon we were seeing the last few years, I think, you know, we're sort of coming out of not such a fabulous place and we're looking for happy, but maybe not crazy happy. If anybody has any thoughts on any of this, I do love the big tool skirt. I see every one of us doing that. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's for somebody, I shouldn't mock. That's really rude. Uh, sorry, uh, but I look at some of these and like, whoa, um, but again, love the, love the texture, love the asymmetrical, love the big dots, right? Um, and uh, so much of this is stuff that we, we might want. I don't know about you, but I didn't um, buy clothing for an entire year. Uh, and so it's kind of fun to think, what would I want to add to my wardrobe and what would I want to add given what I'm knitting? So lots of boxy, um, uh, knit tops are big. So how cute with just sort of like a capri, right? A nice um, straight leg, but not super wide leg capri is something we can definitely uh, adopt. Anyway, so those are some, some trends just out there in fashion. Um, I always think it's interesting to look at that. If you look at what's happening in the knitting world, um, we never seem to be exactly like on the same par. If you pop over to Ravelry and you just say, what's Ravelry up to, right? And we go to patterns and we go to the hottest. Oh, my internet is a little slow today. Am I doing okay? Everybody can hear me? Yeah, you're doing great. Okay, great. Every, and, and if anybody has anything to throw in, always super happy yeah, to listen you. to that. I'm sorry, Bridget, was there something? No, I was just telling people to go ahead and unmute and... Um pop in any comments or if you want to put them in the chat I will we'll read them out for you perfect thank you so when we when we get into into Ravelry which is sometimes where a lot of us look for trends um, we're still into into winter knitting right and have a lot of things that are there um, but we can as we get into sweaters we can sort of see some striping the color blocking right the shorter cropped the puffed sleeves um, and so some of those trends that started last year, right? Love, love this. Like, look at how fun that is with the, just the uh, chevron shaping. So we're starting to see some of those same trends sort of transition into um, the knitting world. Um, and, uh, and then a lot of it is just what we like.
So the circular yolks still being a super, super popular trend, um, both color yolks and lace circular uh, yolks. I'll just pop that one up a little bit bigger for people to see. So this is one of those where the, the uh, very, very simple, right? So this is one where you could say, okay, all of my, um, what's gonna be the hero in this could easily be my yarn. Um, so then let's talk about, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. And we'll talk about some of the, somebody must have texted me. So my phone sort of moved, sorry. Here we go. Some of the trends that we're seeing in, um, in, in yarns and colors. So for spring, um, yoke as in why, yes, it's the yoke is considered here in a circular, uh, in a top-down sweater where you do this top part, um, the shaping of the sleeves and the top of the sweater all in one, um, instead of like a raglan or a set in sleeve, that is considered a yoke. Pet spotlight. And this, so this is one of the super cute sweaters that is new, um, a new yarn called Summer Sesame. This is a Barocco pattern called Etta. Um, and, um, oh, yarn you guys it's just brr. we, Holly, what's, we the would, fiber, what's the fiber content on that the fiber content on these is cotton acrylic and nylon right so it's 47 percent cotton 44 percent acrylic nine percent nylon so when we look at you know some people some of us are, are rather purist in what we like in um in our fibers but the thing that i would tell you as you look at um sort of cottons uh, and plant-based fibers is what the acrylic does in this is the acrylic actually stabilizes the fibers. So I, I'm going to talk a little bit before we go, I'm going to talk a little bit about being, you know, more successful with those plant-based fibers because um, that's often some of the really lovely stuff that comes out this time of year. It is considered a worsted weight, although it's kind of a light worsted. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, sorry. So it's considered a light worsted um, and you get uh, um, almost 300 yards uh, in its gain for um, about $16 if memory serves, going from my from memory. So this fun, fun sweater is um, the smallest size is two skeins and the biggest size is five skeins. So it really, it doesn't take a ton of yardage, which is like a super fun thing. Um, okay, I am going to because we're talking about that one, I'm gonna go ahead and Barocco created this super cute, hold on, I gotta unshare, because every time I share, I have to hit the right button. Candy has trained me, but not very well. Actually, she trained me really well. I'm the one who's not good at this. Okay, there we go. So this is just a little sort of um, fashion uh, show and preview of this yarn. Thank you. 
super easily adjusted um, and really easy to do. Let me just stop this so we don't get something else. Okay, and stop sharing. So that's Summer Sesame. We, we love this yarn so much. We brought in two bags of each color. Um, we're a fairly conservative yarn shop, so we don't usually bring in that much. Um, and uh, uh, did you have a chance to throw the link into the chat? Yeah, Bridget? I put in Summer Sesame and I put in Etta. Awesome, thank you. And actually, let me just pop over one more time and I'll show you. If you go to Barocco and you want to see any of the things that we just talked about and you're like, wait, what was that pattern? If you go to Barocco <laughs> and you type in Summer Sesame, search. And wait for my computer to catch up. When we click on Summer Sesame, we can pop down here and then you're gonna look at um, more patterns using this yarn. And all of those patterns that we just looked at and more are gonna be right on that page. Then you just click on any one of them and it takes you straight to Ravelry. We do have a couple of the books in store that have the entire collection. Um, but you can you can also uh, get we can buy them for you. You can buy them yourself. Whatever you want to do. Obviously, the yarns can you can use all kinds of different yarns. I'm gonna look up ginger and tell you what what if anything is another yarn used in it, uh, or it's just two colorways. Yeah, it's two colorways of the summer sesame. And let me see if I can get you a little bit more of a close up. See the. See the, um, the mosaic in there? So mosaic is done with just slip stitches. Super, super, super easy knitting. There's, um, uh, it makes, it looks like you worked so hard and you just didn't. And that's one of my favorite things. They don't show us the back of it, but anyway. There. Okay, any thoughts or questions um, so far about Summer Sesame, Barocco yarns, or trends? So we, we uh there's no questions. A few people were disappointed that the music was too loud with the video and they couldn't hear you talking, but um, oh, sorry. There wasn't, there wasn't much I could do about it. So sorry, but. Um. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, so all I was really basically just saying is like little thoughts on how to, how to adjust stuff. Um, and um, let's see, we have lots of time today because we're not gonna cover a lot of stuff. So I'll just pop back over and share my screen. And then if you had questions about any specific ones, let me just, uh, I'll kind of give you my thoughts on each one, we, each one of these patterns. Um, so Sierra, uh, mm. what am I doing? I'll just answer real quick. Susan Wong wanted to know if the sample of Etta was knit with sesame, and yes, it is. It sure is, yeah. So the patterns that I'm showing you um, are all originally knit out of sesame. This is a, the Barocco um, design team does these. Okay, so Sierra, see if it does it, there we go. So this is a side to side um, knit, right? Many of these are side to side because almost all of us look better in yarns, um, stripes that are vertical. Uh, this is a super easy pattern. You're going to you're going to cast on and knit straight across. You're most likely doing it in two pieces. It's possible it's one piece. If you look at this and you think that's adorable, but there's no way I can wear something cropped, you literally can cast on the same number and you would just increase more stitches along here until it's the um, length you want it to be and then stop at your center point and then decrease right back out. So highly, highly, highly adjustable super cute pattern um and you're just using uh the barocco sesame for that and molly um someone mary was asking about how you would um oh adjust the shorter how would Maisie be adjusted for longer sleeves see Maisie. okay uh, Maisie is the crocheted beautiful little piece this is one now not having it in front of me most likely what you're doing is essentially making two shawls like two scarves and then you're seaming them right down the middle this is the way that a lot of woven pieces are made and that's what gives you that v-neck that is reversible so if you want to then um, have sleeves this is crochet and one of the great joys of crochet it's so easy you would pop back in when you're done um, with the two identical pieces you would seam it you would seam the sides so you know exactly where your sleeves are you would then just continue to crochet the same pattern right around 
coming down with a sleeve as long as you want. You could make decreases to make it fit. Um, this would be quite an easy one to adjust. And again, with that fringe at the bottom, you are not having to worry about carrying yarns. You're not having to worry about um, uh, weaving in ends. You are self-fringing as you make it. Somebody on Facebook really likes the fringe. <laughs> I love the fringe. Um, and I know that fringe is not for everyone. So if you're like, wow, dude, I would never wear fringe. Don't, don't do the fringe, right? Super easy to make that call. Um, what I was saying about Marisol, this is a, this is a pattern um, that they've done sort of this same pattern or a similar pattern to this in a couple of different yarns. And they've done it because this is a pattern that is remarkably flattering on absolutely everybody. Sometimes we see something on a model and we're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. That's pretty on her, but she's adorable and tiny. Um, so I happen to love horizontal stripes, but they are challenging for us, right? So the joy of this one is we have horizontal stripes on just the center part of our body. And then the sides are a vertical stripe. So this basically, you can come up with as much of an illusion as you want and have that center panel essentially fit right even not all the way out to the outside of our of the girls, but even a little bit out to the inside of the girls. And you can, and your line goes right there. And then you can make the outside of this pattern a little bit bigger. And if you needed this to be um, wider, you can actually do some short rows right in here and get some A-lining in this pattern. And all of that shaping would happen on the side. So the front of it going straight up and down vertically keeps again our eye going straight up and down, looking like we are thinner than we actually are. Um, and I of course look for this in everything that I ever make. Uh, and then um, even if they have you do this piece first and pick up and knit, you can just do that band as an after, after um, thought, right? Pick up and just uh, and attach it or seam it on. So it's really, it's really quite a lovely piece um, and pretty easy and fun to make some adjustments to. Um, and then uh, this is Etta, this is the one that we have in shop as a sample. If you happen to be local to our area and you wanna come see it in person, you're more than welcome to. And this is what we we're saying earlier, the great joy of these little guys is they're super, super, super easy, super fast. This is a weekend long project. Um, most of your increases are probably done right here with your lace work. You want longer sleeves on that instead of binding off um, those stitches, you put those little puppies on a, on a um, holder and you could just knit a little bit longer sleeve all the way down to a three quarter. You could do some adjustments on your size if you needed to. We're here always to help you with that knitting math if you needed it. Um, and you want it longer, you just make it longer. If you want it not to be straight up and down, you just add some increases along the side. Any and all of that we could help you with. Um, and that is then so this cute. They're so cute, aren't they? They're just so cute. And you guys, this yarn, how do I describe it? So it's a cotton and acrylic with a little bit of nylon. That nylon is mostly going to be the sesame seeds that are in it. And the whole point of that, the sesame seeds, I'll show you in a second, is it gives it just a little bit of texture. So it's super cool. Um, again, you're self-knitting here. This whole thing is um, stripey. You are side-to-side -side knitting. This is, again, anytime you do that side-to-side, -side, it's pretty easy to adjust. It's not as easy to try on, right, as you're knitting, but it's pretty easy to adjust. You just have to do some mathy stuff. Molly, I did the, um, the oh, what's it called again? I forgot the name of it. The Lovage. Yeah, Lavage. In yeah. The, the others, in the others, just the sesame. And oh my gosh, you know, you look at it, you think this is going to feel like, you know, um, rough, but God, it's just soft as can be. I love it. And the sesame, so this was, sesame was the most popular wool um, winter yarn I would like to tell you from two years ago that we somehow missed out on the first well that was when I had cancer and I had no idea what it was doing um, and I shouldn't have been doing the buying but I still was but anyway they were very patient with me um, and so the pattern which is a kit if anybody wants this uh, is very different right, last one is this one super simple Could even I did it this in the summer <laughs> sesame Absolutely. yeah I wonder right totes my goats you sure could That's um, what I and do. so it's just do you have you don't have yours with you do you Bridget no I don't I was wearing it last week <laughs> right it's just a really really beautiful very clever Bridget cleverly put patterns in her or pockets in hers as well um, but just a gorgeous gorgeous yarn gorgeous yarn gorgeous pattern um, one of the things that I really like about Barocco patterns is they're they're highly um, 
they are Adjustable. highly knittable, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're well-written, they're yes. easy to do, all that jazz. I'm gonna pop a couple of these up a little closer. I think I have to do it. Let's see, I'm gonna stop showing me so that people on Facebook can see the yarn. There we go. Okay, so these little dealy boppers in there is where the name sesame comes from. Because in the winter yarns, which of course I don't have any of the winter yarns in here with me, in the winter yarns, those little guys were white and they actually looked like little sesame seeds. So I'm just showing you, I didn't bring, I think I, no, I didn't bring all the colors in, but I brought most of the colors in here with me. This one's my favorite. Isn't that fun? That's called sea glass. And I wow. just, yeah, right? I mean, they're all, there's, honestly, there's not a one of them I don't like. Even the purple is not hideous, right? Because <laughs> it's not overly purple. Um, and the one and only one I didn't bring in, I think, is this one. If those of you like me, I'm probably most likely to knit with this because I'm super boring. Um, that neutral is just a, a gorgeous color. So, so when you're knitting with this, here's what you're getting. You're getting uh, the, the uh, acrylic and cotton blend. Acrylic is lighter than cotton, so it's going to pull some of the weight of cotton out. Oh, good. Um, cotton breathes really nicely, right? Acrylic doesn't breathe as nicely. So you're blending those two things. So you get, um, you get strength, you get lighter, um, and you still have breathability. You get self-striping, um, uh, really gorgeous, gorgeous, not super predictable stripes, right? So you get a whole slew of different stripes on it. So when you do um, uh, knit in the round, even if you were to add sleeves onto this, it's, it's still noticeable that you've changed the pattern a little bit, but it's not as bad as a lot of yarns where you have really predictable striping to where this has all wide swaths of stripes and then your sleeve um, or skinny stripes and then your sleeve would have really, really long. It won't do that same thing. So it sort of blends those um, short sleeve, long sleeve things really, really nicely. Um, and uh, if you do a pattern, if you create a pattern or work from a pattern that is written for cotton, you're gonna be totally fine, right? You follow the gauge, follow everything that they're predicting because they take growth into consideration. If you decided to, to um, do the, um, Lovage or Lovage, I have no idea how to actually say that, pattern which was written for the wool. Um, so Mindy's like, the purple is lovely. Yes, Mindy, I, I stand corrected, the purple is lovely. Uh, if you decided to work on a pattern that was originally designed out of wool, then you wanna think about the different char characteristics between cotton and wool. So cotton will stretch a little bit more wide than it will up and down, where a superwash wool will stretch a little bit more up and down than it does wide. So you're actually looking to have maybe a quarter to a half a stitch per inch um, smaller, meaning you have more stitches per inch in the cotton than the wool, okay? Um, and that allows then the growth of the, um, of the pattern, right, at, of the item that you finished as you wear it. And when you make a tiny little change like that, uh, in the gauge, that's what makes us happy and, um, and makes us want to knit with cotton more. Uh, what we've hated about cotton in the past is if we don't make that change, then all of a sudden we have a product project that is like 10 times bigger than we expected it to be and we're not happy with that. Um, so I'm hoping that that might help a little bit. I do have a whole class on plant-based fibers that I teach every spring. I'm gonna get that on the, I might even just do it as a demo or I'll get it on the calendar um, here soon so that we can talk about it. Okay, um, so then FYI, just Chosky is that really, really beautiful um, Amano yarn that we talked about last week. So remember, if you haven't had a chance to watch the, this is the, um, this is the video that went poorly last week. So the interview with Ellen is both on YouTube and on Facebook, and we've put it up there separately. Amano is that wonderful mill that is in Peru uh, that produces lots and lots and lots of Barocos yarns. And they created, um, uh, the mill is actually called uh, Mountain Top, I think. Um, and uh, they created their own brand called Amano with the goal of maintaining and preserving those Andean textile um, traditions. And so every one of their, uh, the yarn names is named after um, uh, an Inca tradition 
or it is a Quechuan word, which was the language. So Chosky actually is the word for the runners that would run between the, the towns uh, in the Inca empire. And so this is a beautiful combination of wool uh, and linen and um, cotton. And so you can see even a little bit of the linen fibers in there, right? Those little bit of fur uh, in there. But it is a, a merino yarn, uh, merino wool sourced locally um, and Pima cotton, which is a uh, endemic to um, uh, Peru, right? So it is a type of cotton that has always grown there, was never imported where the wool of course came uh, from the Spanish. Um, and the, the linen, I don't know where that came from. I'm just gonna tell you right now that may have been sourced from elsewhere, but linen does grow really, really easily in lots of places in the world with very little water. Um, and so that's fantastic. So it's a beautiful yarn. We have a sample in store of a sock that we knit out of it. Um, this is a, a fun little sock uh, and I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit higher. Uh, and you can see just beautiful stitch definition. You get, when you combine wool, cotton, and um, linen, you get all the benefits of the wool, that's stretchy, right, forgiving, yummy. Um, it weighs less than the cotton again. The linen weighs less than the cotton. Um, the linen is gonna give strength. So it's such a weird combination, I think, you know, of a uh, yarn, thinking about it as a sock yarn, but it's the linen that is actually going to keep it from wearing out. It's really beautiful. The whole reason I was talking about this is we had a brand new color come in today. So I thought, oh, I'll just show that. So this is called Cloudy Day, which is so lovely. So that's Chosky. Okay, then of um, some new yarns that we brought in, we have always, all, we're always, always, always looking for cotton cashmeres. Um, cotton cashmere being one of our favorite blends. So Cashmere being one of the most breathable um, fibers on earth, right? It's just, uh, growing up in Colorado, we wore cashmere year round. Um, so it's, it's warm and insulating in the summer and it's breathable and cool uh, in the winter. It's breathable in the cool in the summer. I don't even understand how it does it, but it's wonderful for both. Um, when you combine cotton and cashmere, what you get um, is you get, uh, it's about 10%, I believe, 10 or 15%. 10% um, cashmere. So that cashmere weighs next to nothing, right? If you hold the, that cashmere in your hand, it's just fluff. So you've taken 10% of the weight of the cotton out without adding any weight in. You're not adding a tremendous amount of heat into it because it's only 10%. So you're getting that breathability of the cotton um, without worrying about anything else. Um, we have this gorgeous little shawl, uh, cowl called the Serenity Cowl. I'm going to put me back on so you can see the whole thing. Okay, and I think if I talk, it'll come to me. So this is the, the Serenity Cowl that Bridget knit up. Really, really beautiful. Um, and you can see it has a nice stitch definition in the, uh, in the cotton and cashmere. So really, really pretty. Uh, and this is a, a really gorgeous little cowl that you can easily just throw on, wear, um, and, and just enjoy. Let's see if I can just undo this, we'll throw it on. Oh. And it, it just, what I like about it is it sort of folds. There you go, thank you. It sort of like um, folds down. And because of the way it's pointed, you could also really easily have it come down so you could have it as high up on your neck or as low as you want, right? And so it's just a really, really, really pretty little cowl. You could wear it either way. Wearing it the other way, it's going to give you the ability to have it come out a little farther on your shoulders, right? And have it come down even a little bit more. So it's just a really pretty, um, I think a little $3 pattern uh, on Ravelry. So that one's really nice. We have lots and lots of colors of the cotton cashmere. Um, they tend to be a little bit more on the muted side, the, the um, deeper side uh, in the color range. Um, oh, thank you. Um, so they're really, they're just really lovely. Let me get rid of the spotlight. There we go. Um, and uh, you get good yardage on those, about 169 yards. And this is the lightest of the cotton cashmere that we've had in. We've usually carried it in sort of a DK weight and this is a really nice sport weight. Um, so that's pretty, that's gonna be a great garment, great shawl, great everything. Molly, somebody was, yeah. somebody was wondering how much, how many skeins it would take for a pair of socks in the Chotsky. I think it's just one. It's just one. So it's, let, let me, let me clarify that. It really depends on this, um, this sort of sock right here that you are uh, making it, um, you know, sort of mid cap or low cap, you're one. Uh, the Chotsky has 300 and 
83 yards. It is a little bit heavier than a, a traditional sock yarn. It's probably, um, it's still fingering weight. It's not gonna qualify as a sport weight, but it's getting a little bit closer to sport. Um, merino wool, of course you're, you uh, can knit that down on a smaller needle. Um, so this was knit on a size two needle uh, with just beautiful, uh, beautiful denseness um, to it. So it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous one. Um, if you are making taller socks, you may need two. Uh, and if you're gonna do that, then buy two colors uh, and, uh, and that would allow you to do toes and heels and ribbing in a different color. And you could get two sort of like fun kinds of socks out of it, which I think would be fun. Okay, any other questions so far? I haven't so seen any. Okay, so by the way, the Katia um, is, a, I believe, a Spanish yarn, um, and their concept is their sort of like all natural or more natural uh, uh, line. I love. It. We, I mean, honestly, if we could br bring in every yarn, we'd probably bring in every single concept yarn that they do. They're just really, really, really lovely. They also have gorgeous um, pattern support. So I'm just, I'm right on the Katia website and I didn't give that to you, I'm sorry, Bridget, just katia.com. That's Polynesia, which I'm gonna show you in one second, but this is the cotton cashmere. So it's just lovely patterns, lovely pattern after lovely pattern after lovely pattern um, for adults, for kids, for knit, for crochet. It's a little bit of everything. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen in your whole life, right? And it makes, me, it makes me think I need a granddaughter rather than a grandson coming. But now I'm just gonna put a puppy on it instead, right? And make it gray and blue. Or gray and yellow, who cares? They're all adorable. Love this, love, love, love. So just, and these are kind of, right, this trend right here, that Trinity top, super on point for what's happening right now. Um, Right, this, maybe we're not gonna actually wear it, but super on trend um, for what's happening now. That sheer, right, this where you're blending the, the um, sheer bits, right, in the opaque center, super on trend right now. Just some absolutely gorgeous patterns. So I do um, highly recommend taking a look at all of that. I believe you can find every single one of those patterns on Ravelry. Um, and if for any reason you can't, just holler at us and we will help you find them. Okay. The other one that we brought in is uh, from the concept is called uh, Polynesia. We've carried this before. In the past, they were um, uh, solid colors and they were quite bright. We carried them for a couple of years and just thought, meh, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And then they came out with this and we're like, okay, apparently we have to bring this back. So these are a nice, beautiful, um, variegated, tonal variegated yarn. Um, it is just, they're really, really lovely. This is a combination. This is one of those like normal um, Katia, right? It's cotton, linen, viscose blend, right? So they blend all kinds of different stuff. That viscose is gonna be the shiny, shiny bits that are right in there. Um, and you can feel in it the strength of the linen, right? The softness of the cotton, the sort of slubbiness of the cotton. Um, and so they're just knit up beautifully. We don't have a sample knit up. Diane has uh, just started one today, but I will share with you again, pop one over here coming up to Polynesia. They don't have as many things um, knit out of it, but I'm trying to get, see if we can get that picture a little bigger so you can see the texture of the yarn. Just pop this down. Um, hopefully you can see it pretty well. Oh, there we go, perfect. So it has that little bit of slubbiness. It has a little bit of a thick and thin. This is a yarn that would be gorgeous to knit on a big needle, right? And have it just be open and slubby and fabulous. This is not necessarily a yarn that you're gonna do lots and lots and lots of detail on. So this is a, your, your buddy for stockinette. Um, and uh, you know uh, anything where, where just the yarn gets to be the hero. So this is simple knitting, fun knitting, light, um, because that linen is lighter than the cotton, the viscose is lighter than the cotton and just gorgeous asymmetrical, still being right on point for what's happening right now out there in those trends. So it's super cute. Uh, and you can tell again, right, mostly stockinette with a little reverse stockinette or a little bit of ribbing. You're not gonna wanna do anything that's really, really complicated. I sure as heck am not gonna do a lot of lace in this cause it's gonna hide. Um, but anything where you're looking for a little bit more of a solid um, fabric is gonna be really pretty. 
How are we doing? Is this interesting to people? Are we liking this whole chit chat about yarns? Are we good? Okay. All right. So are you ready for something fabulous? This is not a new yarn. This is a new yarn to us, but this is not a new yarn. This amazingly yummy stuff has been around for a while and it is called Fairy Wings. This is a yarn that's been on our radar for years um, that we have long wanted to bring in uh, and finally said, this is the year. We actually were bringing this in for, um, in, uh, for International Women's Day last week. But you know what? Sometimes things happen and the yarn just didn't arrive in time. Um, and, but that doesn't mean we don't love it just as much as we would have if we'd had it last week, right, Mindy? I'm seeing the ooh. And all I can say is if you could feel it, you would say because it's just delicious. Um, I'm going to tell you fib a fiber content first, 69% mulberry silk, 22% mohair, and 9% polyamide. The mohair that they have in there, they don't call it kid, kid mohair, but I'm telling you, it is a really soft, really luscious mohair. Um, you can see that the vast majority of the core of it is that mulberry silk. Um, and uh, I don't even know what the polyamide is. They must have the polyamide mixed in with, the, um, with that as the core. And then your mohair is very, very, very lightly spun around it. So let me just see if I can get a little halo. Let me see if I can get a darker one. You can see the halo a little better, right? So you see that little bit of a halo right there. So it's just really lovely. The mohair is going to be a little darker than the silk. So that halo sometimes is a slightly different color than the rest of the yarn. Um, and so this is really, really fun. So let me show you. Uh, they did a, um, they being Fiberspace is the company uh, that makes this, created a booklet um, that is absolutely gorgeous. And I'll show, I'll pop onto Ravelry here in a second. This is the two of color. I'm gonna come back to me. Um, let me play spotlight. This is a two color uh, shawl um, with a name that I cannot pronounce. I'm sorry. Uh, and- um, Looks like it's Irish. <laughs> probably Gaelic and being Irish, I probably should know how to say this, but I don't because I'm American. And, uh, but that's right. It's just a really, really lovely. It has that daisy stitch, which has been really popular. It feels great on. You really feel that silk. You feel that, you know, yummy lusciousness. If mohair is um, pokey on you, right, this is still mohair. So it's a soft, luscious, lovely mohair, but it is still mohair. So just know that um, I would, you know, wear mohair head to toe, kids self mohair head to toe anytime I could, but I'm going to come a little closer, give you a quick look at the detail on that stitch. This is definitely a stitch you're going to want signature needles or chow goo needles or something that's very, very, very pointy um, is going to be your friend because it's, uh, it's one of those that you're doing lots and lots of uh, stitches together. Ravelry. Oh, and of course, I just went off of the one I wanted, but give me one second. We'll get back to where we want it to be. Um, so fiber spades, uh, Car uh, Carol, um, oh, that's embarrassing. Let's see, her name is escaping me at the moment. Carol Feller, Carol Feller is the one who started fiber spades, I would like to tell you. And she has some absolutely gorgeous um, patterns uh, and pattern support. I'm not, you know what? I'm going to make sure I'm not lying to you about that. I may be lying to you. Ignore everything I just said. Anyway, she has some really, really beautiful patterns. Um, very wings collection. And coming right up. Can I show you my favorite thing in this whole page? A, I love the mitts. Don't you love those mitts? They are, they're stripy and you can see the fluff, right? Right around it. That's actually my second oh, favorite. Cute. But hold on a second, let me show you my favorite by the same designer. And I saw this as we were just wandering through earlier and I'm like, okay, well, apparently I'm making that. Ah, how amazing is that? Right? So you get this really fun cowl with like sort of a chain mail look at the top and a really sort of simple color and the bite, vibrant and bright right underneath. I believe they are made with just two different colors of the um, fairy wings. I love that. Okay, back to what I'm actually looking for. Squirrel. There we go. 
fairy wings collection. So this is Charlotte Walford. So glad I stopped myself with like where I was going with that earlier. Um, and she created, darn it. This is why Bridget usually does this stuff because she's so much more organized than I am. Get us to that fairy, we, here we go. Okay, so you can buy this whole collection, the fairy wings collection, all of those patterns come together in it. And believe it or not, what I just showed you is this. In the two color version, I even like texted my rep who had sent us this sample right before we got on because I was like, I didn't recognize it as that. But it is the same, it is the same pattern um, as that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful pattern, really, really fun. Um, love it in the multicolor, love it in the two color. Uh, but that is the pattern book. Um, and so it's a great place to start for what you might want to do with those yarns. But I would not at all keep you from just looking up that yarn and looking at other super fun things that you can do with it. Um, it is going to be warm. In the UK, they consider this a spring yarn. Um, in Southern California, we can consider this uh, a winter yarn. Um, to uh, like we could wear it right now, winter into um, uh, very, very early spring. But when you do a nice open lacy uh, shawl like that, this is definitely one that you could carry all summer long with you um, because it is mostly silk and you could throw that puppy in your bag and be able to, um, to grab it and just throw it around your neck when you go into those freezing cold places. So um, it's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarns. All right. I know Minty's like so glad to see spring of fall yarns here. Me too, uh, because every I'm, yeah I'm always I love uh, spring and summer, um, and I personally love knitting and plant based uh, yarns and wearing them, um, mostly because we live in a place that's hot at least nine or ten months of the year, uh, and so we really sort of look for those other things. So we have I think about five other um, super super pretty spring and summer yarns that we're saving until next month. Um, some of them are already here. Uh, so that's a little tease for you. We also, um, I, any of you remember those huge, fabulous yarn bowls that we brought in? We will have those available also at the, um, uh, the in-store yarn crawl. So this is April 24th, the weekend, uh, beginning the 24th through I think it's the 27th, something like that. And um, we'll be doing all kinds of fun stuff um, those days. And also uh, local yarn shop day, we'll probably bring out something, one of those things on local yarn shop day, which is the 17th. Um, uh, so just to give you an idea of all of that, um, give you a, and a, please ask me questions about any of the stuff that I showed you as well, uh, but to give you um, one other thought, um, and that is the, uh, this next Thursday, a week from today, we are going to be interviewing um, Julie with the owner of Coco Knits, talking to her a little bit about her, the Coco Knits method and also her amazing tools, which we love. Um, and uh, I heard the design aesthetic and all of that. So we're really looking forward to that chat. Um, tomorrow we are doing our demo at 2.30. Uh, Barbara's gonna do, it's still going with National Crochet Month. Barbara's gonna do post stitches. Um, and so that should be really fun. I'm really looking forward to that because I love post stitches. I love everything that they do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna join in and just play with post stitches with her. I'm not just, she's gonna be doing all, all of it. I'm just gonna be watching it and playing with it on my own. Um, Bridget, do we have any questions that have come up? Um, not, I answered one. Somebody was wondering about the yarn for the uh, the Gaelic named uh, shawl. <laughs> that was the fairy wings. I know, I have no idea. We're going to have to send a note. <laughs> How do we say this? <laughs> um, but I haven't seen any others. People are all excited about um, the different... Um, yarns that are coming out and how pretty they are. I am too. I hadn't seen the fairy wings. I was like, oh, wow. I know. I know. And to, oh, if you're, if you're local, come pet it. If you're not, buy one and pet it. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, they're just so pretty. Um, and then uh, uh, everything is out and on the website. So any of those things that you wanted, uh, they are available already um, and uh, just super, super pretty. And if you have any questions about them, you know, we are here for you. Happy to answer questions um, on any of it. And uh, otherwise, happy knitting. Um, I put links into um, for our website to all of the yarns and there are links to the patterns. Um, and so when you finish with your um, uh, Zoom call today, you should get a chat and it will have if you if you came, it'll have all the information in your chat record after you get done. So if you forgot and you want to go back and look at it, you don't want to call us. It should be there. And then awesome. you can also see this again on Facebook. 
Yes. Yes. Which is great. And I know we need to do prizes before we go. Yeah, that's right. I'd love so, to know from people, what's your favorite of everything we just showed you today? Which, which yarn did you like the best? Me? Everybody. You Everybody. Can do fairy wings. Fairy wings. <laughs> I'm super excited about Summer Sesame. I bought the Summer, I bought the is, summer Sesame um, book already. Oh, good. Do you? Online, I, yeah. Have you, have you tried the yarn yet? No, I haven't bought it yet. Mm. I have to finish my cocoa knits and this other thing I'm working on. <laughs> <laughs> so Molly, what is- Stop giving yourself rules like that. <laughs> I, I do too. I have like I have four sweaters that I'm like I'm really just desperate to finish. I really I want to be able to wear them, right? So I I'm, uh, I keep trying to find like five minutes each day to work on like two rows. Um, people ask the shawl that I'm wearing. I'm going to it's a it's a trendsetter pattern. It's a very Klein pattern. Um, I'm gonna have to look up the name of it, but this you guys would be absolutely um, fantastic. Um, knit in. Um, uh, any of the yarns that we looked at, if you want it even stripier, it actually would be really, really fun um, knit in the summer sesame, but your beautiful uh, trans translation of this would be the, um, the uh, cotton cashmere would be fantastic. And uh, I, will, I will see if I can look up, if anybody really wants to know the name of it, just shoot me the, the note, but it's a big old triangular shawl. Here's what I love about what he does. Um, he's, he's a man after my own heart in terms of being a little bit of a lazy knitter. So you start in the middle with your cast on. And so you are always uh, decreasing the number of stitches that you're working on. And then you pick up the other side and you do the same thing. Ah, love it. So, yes. Okay. I don't see any other um, people. Lots of people saying they like the summer sesame. Okay. Um, and the fairy wings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are just two, they're going to be just two absolutely fantastic yarns. We're looking, we're, and we hope that those will be around a long time. Right. Right. So, all right. Do we want to do prizes? Are you yes. ready for prizes? Okay. Um, so from uh, Zoom, as always, I'll just repeat this, that you um, have an entry into the um, prize category, whatever, um, <laughs> by signing up on Calendly. Um, and today is Carol Listenberger. So oh. Carol is our winner today from Zoom. Yay, thank you. And then, <laughs> and then if you um, chat, share, comment, all that sort of stuff on Facebook, then um, that's where I pick from. And that the winner today is um, Vicki Chupp. If I don't, C-H-U-P-P. -P, so if I, if I don't, I if we don't have your... I think she's in our system, but just okay. in case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Case, if you're we not, don't have, you. if we don't have your email, go ahead and um, send us an email to hands on knitting center at gmail.com and um, give us your address. Okay. And Carol, I want to know if you think you can do your huge needle knitting with this fun with fairy wings and do the wet felting on top. So you might have to give that a try because I think that would be truly amazing with the mohair and silk. It's just a very different um, sort that of- That crossed my mind. Mohair and silk. That, that did cross my mind just now. Yeah, so if you try it, I wanna see. I wanna see pictures. So otherwise, you guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Thank you, Bridget, for all of your help today. Um, and we will see you all hopefully tomorrow and next week. Um, but holler out if we can help with anything. Thanks everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye on Bye -bye. Facebook. Bye. Bye, everybody on Facebook.